Hello and welcome to Hey, I Loved That Movie, the podcast where we rewatch the films we loved when we were younger to see if they still hold up. I'm Dan. I'm Michael. And I'm Helena. And this week we have special guest Tom Reed from Sans Pants Radio. Hello, I am Tom Reed from Sans Pants Radio. And Tom, um, what, what movie have you chosen for us today? Uh, we are watching Richard, we watched Richard Kelly's masterpiece. <laughs> no, not that one. Uh, Southland <laughs> Tales. Thought I'd share. Everyone's always talking about Donnie Darko, and this is his best film. I can't say that it's true. It's it's a film. Yeah. So, so what? uh, What connection did you have to this film? Because honestly, the three of us had never fucking heard of it before. (laughs) That that makes sense. (laughs) Shockingly, none of the actors had ever talked about it. I'm well. It's it's historical because it is the first time i think it's the first time i could be wrong but i'm going to say it confidently i think it's the first time the rock went by dwayne johnson in a movie as a, like his official credit is dwayne johnson rather than yeah. the rock so that's it's it's a moment in in history in the illustrious career of of the rock but uh yeah so um it's look i i don't know how i found it but for some reason i just became obsessed with it when i was like 14 15 what is it 2006 it came out so i probably would have been like 15 16 ish um and then for like three or four years i was just obsessed with it it was like in that period where you know when you're like you're that that age and you are trying to define how your personality should be mm-hmm. which is yeah. bad <laughs> yeah um and thankfully i didn't have facebook at the time myspace was the big thing when this was big and so my entire developmental personality has been nuked by myspace thank you tom but a lot of it it was there was I like my MySpace was covered in like quotes from this movie, pictures from this movie, just the clip of uh the killer's clip in the film was on my <laughs> like was pinned to my MySpace profile. I just I loved it. It was like all the corny, ridiculous lines. It felt so cool and interesting. And I have no idea why it just, it just, it was a part of this movie that spoke to me on a level that I don't know why. And it just did. And I watched it, I watched it heaps and I hadn't watched it. I reckon the last time I watched it, I would have been about 19. So it would have, it's about yeah 10 or 11 years between watches and it still rocks. So uh, did you like show this film to other people and be like, Hey, watch this movie. It was re- it's great. It's my favorite. <laughs> Uh, I think I did, and I think people like liked it. Like I, I, I still have those friends. So oh, wow. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that was what I was going to ask. Was like, did you have many friends? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I had, I had one of my good friends um, that I'm still friends with today. We, we used to watch like weird. You know, I use weird in air quotes because I look back at what I thought was like weird when I was like 16, being like, oh, I've just found this really cool movie, and it's like Taxi Driver. Like, calm down, 16 <laughs> year old Tom. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like you know when you discover music and you discover the Beatles. And mm. you think, oh, wow. Yeah. Ah, come on. But, you know. <laughs> You're like, I, um, I don't fully understand this, so it must be amazing. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I was really proud of the fact that I liked Radiohead when I was 15. Yeah. See, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what it's like. This was my Radiohead. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Honestly, you could describe this film as it's very Radiohead. So yeah. can you can you explain the plot a little bit for people that haven't had the experience <laughs> also for film? us because i mean we all, we all watched this film not too long ago and <laughs> like I, bit, honestly what? there was a moment at the beginning where i was like is this whole thing gonna be a found footage movie and then oh because yeah the opening yeah, it yeah, starts yeah, with yeah. that yeah. and then i'm like oh okay texas just got nuked okay fair and then that just doesn't come up again for the whole <laughs> film <laughs> every so often i'm like oh yeah there was a nuke at the beginning of this in 2005, and now it's the far future of 2008. 2008. <laughs> With yeah. the, the fucking weird clothes all the people are wearing. Yeah. And... It being 2008 is amazing because it looks like they went, oh, yeah, it'll be like 2030 and everyone will be wearing silver. It's like, no, it's 2008. <laughs> Fashion doesn't move that far. Look, the fashion in some of the 2000s was pretty insane. Like, yeah. you know, this, 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 this wasn't too far from what people were just rocking, <laughs> not I, me. Yeah, the the beaded the beaded bralette that she was one um, Zora was wearing. Yeah, was there was quite a statement. The eyeshadow 
the really sharp eyeshadow from the oh, I can't remember what her, we're not very good with names. No, that's we, okay. Uh, that's okay. There's um, a lot of characters to try to remember. Yeah. Are you Serpentine? Yeah. The um Serpentine, yeah. Yeah. Her, that's actually quite 2020, really, isn't it? It's very like bold and statement. It's just from the future, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. the future's gonna be more <laughs> futuristic than they were predicting, quite the, from the film. The thing that uh threw me off the most <laughs> was that like the I, I don't I don't know who the main bad guy is. There's loads of them, but as soon as I realized that it's the uh the dinosaur from Toy Story. <laughs> Wallace Shawn. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh yeah. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this movie is loaded with everyone like yeah. if you were big or like a good character actor in the year of like 2003 to 2007 you are in this film i i read a quote from the director where he said why he cast did the cast it's that he wanted to get people who were pigeonholed and he would like break the mold of them that's oh. that's kind of what he was trying to do but also i like the reason I love this era of film is because all the casts are weird. Every film that yeah. came out at this point has an insane cast. So he tried to untypecast Dwayne The Rock Johnson by casting him as someone called Boxer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which almost... yes but, he's, but he's a weird, sensitive, kind of strange dude. Yeah, he does a weird hand thing that they yeah. never explain. <laughs> no, I'm, got amnesia. I, I saw yeah. the hand thing, and I maintain that this might just be me filling in the holes, because there were a couple of small holes in this film um so. <laughs> that he was putting his hands together and that was his two souls coming together and that's he was anxious about it because he was getting closer and closer to finding his other soul maybe that's profound i agree yeah i yeah. you know I, I could write an essay about this film as a you know from the eyes of a 16 year old yeah, you could probably post it on MySpace if it still exists. <laughs> hey, look. Yeah, I, I I have a vivid memory of like the main part of my MySpace bio was just like a screenshotted like pastel painting that someone had done of Sean William Scott's character like inverted with the line, um, Roland Tavers is a pimp and pimps don't commit suicide. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Which yeah, we can was... all agree is the best line in the film. I have to disagree on the best line thing as well because uh, I think the best line and the best joke in the film is when because uh, you, you know the the person that's undercover is going by Deep Throat Two. Yes, and then like where Buffy's a porn star and they're like, "Are you Deep Throat Two? And she goes, "I'm not in that film." That just fucking got <laughs> that's, that's a that solid joke. Um, my favorite, my favorite line was just the bit where Amy Poehler calls Zora a half-rate comedian. <laughs> 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 and that was that was sort of the only bit that really tickled me. Uh, least favorite line, just to throw it out there, is probably the bit where they get the rock and stiffler to say the n word, and I'm like, cool, right? Let's. Uh, yeah, they were really trying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they... that's, I forgot that was in the film until yeah. it started coming up. I'm like, mm. oh, they. Oh yeah, nah, not good. Because they're <laughs> trying good. to make him be a racist cop, but I mean, I yeah. I didn't quite get why. <laughs> like, so many things are happening in this film. At one point, I forgot that Sean William Scott was in this movie because it was just a massive break without him. Yeah, he disappears for a bit. <laughs> uh, they it's make, a bit where they he's make unconscious Dwayne in bit... two locations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they make Dwayne darker in this film, don't they? He is darker. Yeah. 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 He's also he like, looks a lot darker. He's very small, but only compared to like current rock, like definitely not compared to me. Like <laughs> he's still Yeah, but he's not as built. With baby that. rock. Yeah. Yeah, baby yeah. rock. Pebble. <laughs> baby. Maybe that's how he got away with not having the rock in his credit. Yeah, I mean <laughs> <laughs> slimming down, yeah. making himself smaller. <laughs> So the other thing that I think the reason I, I came into this film with a very open mind because I knew absolutely nothing about it. The first thing I picked up on was, oh, God, we have a voiceover. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just, that just immediately it's... Set, puts me on edge these days because we've so many films that we've watched for this podcast have a whiny emo voiceover start. that's just like, I'm better than you and I'm going to tell you why, but really like subtly yeah. and really uh, pedantically. And okay. you're going to enjoy this next two and a half hours while I shit all over you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Except this, oh, God. this time it was just Justin Timberlake quoting the Bible every five minutes. Yeah. Hey, he gets the best secrets in the whole film. Yeah, that was I mean, you can, very you unexpected. Can that was a moment where I was tempted to just shut the laptop screen. <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I, I'd yeah. argue it's the second best because the first best is uh, the car sex scene. Because that comes out of nowhere and makes no sense. It, I like that scene. It was entirely, it was... Oh. entirely so they could <laughs> oh, have the yeah. coming soon joke, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that was the... So, yeah, when, when you messaged me on Twitter, Tom, you were like, 
full disclosure, there's a scene in this movie where two cats have sex. I'm like, okay. That wasn't the bit you should have warned us Fair. about. That was, the, that was the only scene in the film that probably made sense. Like, I knew yeah. what was going on in that scene. Yeah. I was it's... a bit surprised at the actual, like, car vulva. I wasn't expecting yeah. that. That was a bit... Was yeah. Really detailed. It was a you really don't, detailed scene. You don't get scene. vaginas in films, really. Especially yeah. not in big budget, even if they're low, you know... Quality. Quality. Yeah. <laughs> Someone, someone um, had to sit there and animate that sequence, and I think they still put more effort into it than when the blimp blows up at the end. <laughs> all the money, all the money went into the car yeah. scene. Yeah, they had no money left. No, I, yeah. I just love the idea that so like Richard Kelly could only have made this film because he made Donnie Darko first. Yeah, like there is no way on earth, and no. you can just tell that this is the movie he's always wanted to make. From watching it, I'm like, oh, this is your, this is the thing you love. And because you made Donnie Darko and it was hugely popular and you became the indie darling and you had a blank check to do whatever you wanted, you picked the project you've always wanted to make, which is this, and then you didn't get to make anything for like eight years after. How much did he how much did they lose on this film? A lot. Oh millions. It's look, the the thing about this film and the reason you were all so confused, I don't know how much research you did into it, is that we only get the last three parts of the story because originally Southland Tales is three volumes of a comic book and then the last three chapters of the comic book are what's featured in the film. So that whole (laughs) narration bit at the start with Timberlake talking about what's happening and you see there's like illustrations of soldiers fighting Mm. are all of the events that lead up to Boxer going missing and coming back. And there is crucial information in those comic books that make, like for example, you learn that Roland and him were best friends and they're the, so the idea is that the two kids at the start of the movie are him and Sean William Scott as kids. Yeah. There's one yeah. scene where Justin Timberlake's like, yeah, he was my best friend. And it's like... It's kind of near the end of the film because you're like, oh, that's why he's in this film. Hmm. Yeah, it's the last line of the film when he says, yeah, he's yeah. from Hermosa Beach, California. He's not a pimp. He's a pimp. Pimps can't commit suicide. Yeah, they the can't. whole idea is that they went to war together. And so I didn't know. Like, so I, I, didn't, I didn't read the comic first. I managed to find it online when I was younger, but I don't think you can buy it anywhere now. I think it's gone. And the idea that, you know, audiences would need to read three volumes of a comic before watching a movie. So good. <laughs> like, it would have just been... But again, blank check, because Donnie Darko was so successful and had such a grip on the balls of cinema. Something that I sort yeah. of thought might have happened was, because obviously in Donnie Darko, that was a film where a lot of teenagers were like dark and brooding and trying to find more into it, and that would probably have been on the MySpace and Tumblr of most people. Um, yeah. and, then, and then it's like, four years later, he's like, well, I've got this other film that I want to make. My last film was really successful because it's got weird stuff that people didn't quite know what was going on. So let's just go all out in making weird stuff that you don't quite know what's going on. So <laughs> yeah. I- I, I looked into how this film was written and how it was made. So it was originally written before 9-11 happened. And it was meant yeah. to be a parody satire of how Hollywood and South California worked, which you can see in the film. There's a lot of like taking the piss out of celebrity culture. There being like a celebrity president and all that stuff. The, the, then 9-11 happened and he went back and rewrote the script. He wanted it to be about more than just celebrity. He wanted it to be about war and uh things like the patriot act and the government having more control and what else did i have a the a quote of when he said he said the original film was more about making fun of hollywood but now it's about i hope creating a piece of science fiction that's about really important problems we're facing about civil liberties and homeland security the tapestry of ideas are all related to some of the biggest issues that i think we're facing right now alternative fuel or the increase in obsession with celebrity and it's kind of like that's a lot to put in a film there's, it's also it's very there's a weird. Lot. It's very weird that renewable energy is the bad guy in this film. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting take that he assumes that the Republicans would endorse, like would go all in on renewable energy if it meant they could control everything. Which just like like I I watched this like recently and was like, man, there's some things that he hit very close to mm. like how things are now, and then. There are things that it's like, oh yeah, you don't realize how much the Republicans love petrol. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot, love money gas, man. <laughs> yeah. a lot of money in it. A, a lot um, of this film seemed to be like, yeah, ha- having a point like that, trying to make a point and get a message across, but not quite. 
<laughs> I, I think like... that, that's the difference between this film and Donnie Darko is with Donnie Darko, he fully understood what message he wanted to say. And it was like he knew how to get to that message and he knew how to say that message. I think with Southland Tales, he knew how to make about two of the overall messages and the rest of them, he just kind of ran out of full force. <laughs> <laughs> no, but see, I love that. I love that. No. That he tried. The, the, like, um, who, who makes this movie? No yeah. one. Yeah. Like, it, oh, there's a lot of I'm going to. <laughs> the ambition was incredible. The execution was incredible for a different reason. Flawless. Five stars. <laughs> Flawless. <laughs> Flawless I, the produ- to be fair, the production is something like, like this still looks good. It's, gr- it's grimy. It's gritty. There's like a lot of, there's, I mean, there's a lot of sets. There's a lots, lots of moving about. There's lots of contrast between like rich and poor and yeah. light and dark about. until they start talking or moving the plot forward. <laughs> <laughs> Until the script happens. Yeah, the films are lovely. Even the weird ones, like you know Justin Timberlake's music video, which you know it well, was. Do you, do you want to know why that sequence exists? Because you only get that if you read a comic that no one read before the <laughs> yeah. movie came out. You know, that, I love, I love films sense. with films with homework. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the whole thing was that. Um, so you know how his face is all scarred, and yeah. uh, obviously the the story is is that he copped friendly fire from. Sean William Scott, uh, Roland in the war, a grenade went off. The idea is that the grenade went off while he was listening to an iPod and the last song he heard was All These Things That I've Done by The Killers and it just plays on a loop in his head constantly. Okay. That's why he does so many drugs. Now, I mean, that's I, not clear had, from the film. You'd think that someone that had been blown up by a grenade and now has chronic psychosis, essentially, wouldn't be allowed to man a... Um, massive long distance assault sh- sniper rifle, maybe. Just a suggestion. Give that job to someone else. I don't know. It's Pro- kind of like a like a Absolutely. more fucked baby driver. <laughs> 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 this movie's better than Baby Driver. What are you talking about? That's a very hard comment to make because <laughs> I can't say no. It's not because mm. yeah, it's got less nonsense yeah. in it at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I win. <laughs> yeah. I No, you kind of held hostage with that question. <laughs> I really like seeing um going back to what we were saying about trying to untypecast people, getting yeah. Buffy the vampire slayer to be a really out and proud prostitute. Uh, well, not porn prostitute, uh, porn star. Yeah. Slightly slightly yeah. different. I really like that. I like that part of the film I did enjoy and I really enjoyed her being like I'm going to be really liberal with my views about sexuality and yeah, kids are going to have sex and we should just be okay with that instead of teen horniness is not a crime. (laughs) Teen horniness is a core um, theme of the film. And you know that because it tells you a couple times throughout the film. (laughs) (laughs) I I love that Richard Kelly also has a music credit for that song. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's great. She is so good in this. Like rewatching it again, I was worried that lots of things wouldn't age well. Really, there's only one kind of problematic bit, and that's the scene we've already addressed with The Rock yeah. and Shirley and Scott. But all of the Sarah Michelle Gellar stuff is really nice. Her relationship with Boxer is really sweet too. I think the fact that it starts off that she's manipulating him and it's like clear that she's kind of using him a bit and she seems a bit like heartless. And then by the end of it, it's like, oh no, she, she loves and cares for this man. She understands him and... You get that really, and again, I know you don't love it, but that great little <laughs> dance sequence with him and Mandy Moore and her, and they're dancing around, and she's like, he's going to die. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Right the end, yeah. It's yeah. beautiful. Oh, that, it's I, really I mean, I, beautiful. Is it? No, that, yes. It's not really long, awkward, and cringy, no. and kind of like your first dance at the school disco? I, I think oh, it's beautiful. How, I think that's just how long that sequence was. Yeah. Because it's about 20 minutes and it feels like a good 35 to 40 minutes I've long. I've never wanted a blimp to explode more. <laughs> yeah, like, because they said as soon as the fucking ice cream van starts floating and he's standing on it with a bazooka, I'm like, cool, he's going to blow up the blimp. And 10 minutes later, I'm like, he might blow up the blimp <laughs> <Still hasn't laughs> yet. They've got to dance for a bit and then there's all the Jesus imagery. I couldn't watch <laughs> this film in, in cinema because I, I needed to keep checking, like, how long was left. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I was like, well, I could bring this film to your attention. Yeah, no, it thanks. Was an experience. Yeah. I paid £3.50 to watch this film. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing the math in my head of like, oh, what's that in Australian dollars? I reckon you've paid like 18 bucks for a movie. 
<laughs> or like nine dollars, I think maybe nine or ten bucks over yeah. here. Is it really? So that, that is it that? <laughs> I think it's double and a little bit extra. Six dollars mm-hmm. sixty-one in oh, Australian yeah. currency. So how is that per hour? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, how is it per hour that the movie feels like? <laughs> oh, it is because for that you get plenty. <laughs> Yeah, if you, I, I, yeah, I've never been I did, so... I, I watched it in two settings. I did have to, like, have a little break. This film feels <laughs> like it needs an interval. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if it does, because it is only two and a half hours long, and that's not, like, a super long film. This film feels like a good four hours. <laughs> the really tiny oh. cinema I used to go to in, in Sandwich, um, real Which place. is a play star. <laughs> yeah, look, um... my brain stopped for a second, but I didn't want to seem rude, but that is... <laughs> no, that's a real place. Um, I live in a place country with... where we have a town called Wagga Wagga, so... Oh, no, that's fair. Well, yeah, there's a town... Fine. There's a town near Sandwich called Ham, so... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that's so good. The sign yeah. kept getting stolen. They had to just... They, oh, I think they just stopped bothering to put it back up. They, they, they changed it. They used, yeah, they changed it to Sandwich and then Ham underneath because they yeah. had Ham Sandwich and they, everyone kept stealing the sign. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so good. We have a Yass in um, New South Wales. A what? Uh, yass, like Yass. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah one a double S. Yep. Yep. Ooh. On the way to on the way to Sydney, you can stop into Yass. <laughs> Is there a queen nearby? <laughs> in so in, in Sandwich, there was a um a really tiny cinema, um like you stand at like one one screen independent, um and they always had an interval for like every movie. Oh, that's cool. That's good. And, intervals are uh, yeah. intervals are missing. We need more of them. It was I think it was solely just to like ply people with more ice cream. Yeah. Um, and try and get their sales up that way because it was a, such a small cinema. But yeah, so you definitely would have had an interval for this film. When it, where would you know. put the interval is my question for you. In this movie, well, where would you put your break? Well, there, there's <laughs> that point where one of the characters explains to the camera what is happening because as an audience, you can't follow along. Yeah, maybe just before that. So when you come back to the film, <laughs> yeah. you're reminded yeah. of the last. <laughs> oh, like you're watching a TV show on a, on a channel with ads yeah. and they, they'd replay the last 30 seconds just so that you yeah, yeah everyone's the, on board there is a there is a fully point where one of the bad guys in the silver is saying like oh this, these two characters are in a car going here and then these characters are over here doing this it's like yeah no put it there <laughs> and um, I, I, know, I know fully that that sequence is in that shot is in because audiences didn't know what was going on like i will bet that they got the feedback of we lost track <laughs> It was edited a bunch of times, actually. Yeah, um, no, it was. Yeah, because we watched yeah, the, the. I'm guessing we all watched the Cannes cut, which is the original cut. Because from what I can tell, it it, it, no. it it was there, got bombed, and they were like, "If you cut 20 minutes out, we'll give you the last million dollars that you need to finish this film." And he was yeah. like, "Fucking fine, I'll do it." I've I've seen both because I own the DVD because I'm that cool, and you can watch both versions. Um, and the differences are like there's nothing from either cut that it, that I think if you don't love the film will necessarily make you love the film. Um, so you're like, saying it, it doesn't make sense cutting more out of the film? <laughs> well, it, it obviously makes less when you cut more out. Um, but I, I think I think there's like just little things like I don't think. I don't know if that scene in the bookshop happens in the other cut where Boxer goes in and the three women who work for while the Sean are standing there and they're holding the screenplay. I don't know if that happens. The script was also the vague plot for the movie, right? So the the so it having a plot point of the characters in this movie are trying to prove that this script isn't bullshit really kind of sold it. Yeah, you want <laughs> you want the mess of this film isn't bad, I promise. Yeah, look <laughs> within the film. <laughs> Something that um I think you you've mentioned quite a few times on on um Scaredy Boys as well is one thing you guys hate. Not not that I'm trying to suggest that you hate this movie in any way, but it <laughs> oh, I love it. Show it. Show it. Don't say it. And they don't follow that rule. No, they tell. Yeah, they fully tell the audience every aspect of the film. Well, not every aspect. They leave a lot out, actually. <laughs> but... well, it's in a book, apparently. <laughs> yeah, they don't then also show that bit. They it's just don't do it. So they, they constantly like reaffirm the the themes and the story, which I'm a big fan of. Of you know, a film is good when periodically you have to tell the audience that it's anti-capitalist. Yeah. <laughs> but is it because both sides lose? For that, the whole actually the only character who wins. Ah, oh, maybe I'm wrong. The only character who seems to win is um the other woman from the Marxist group who works with, um, what's her name? Deep Throat 2, who doesn't get the invite to the party. 
she seems if I if I'm remembering correctly, nothing like she's in that shootout at the end. So I guess you assume she might be killed in that shootout. Yeah, she was shot twice. Oh, that's right. No, she does get shot. Yeah, yeah. she dies. <laughs> Nobody wins. The only person who goes okay then is Pilot Abilene. He's the only one who survives because Krista dies on the blimp. Yeah. Uh, Boxer dies on the blimp. Sean William Scott, you assume. Don't. Isn't that well? Meant, isn't that meant well, to be maybe the end of the world? Yes. Isn't them like reconnecting meant so everyone dies? <laughs> So technically, literally everyone everywhere dies. I have a small confession to make. I thought the found footage at the start was the end of the film. Uh, so I no, thought that. that so I, I just by the time it got to the end of the film, I'd forgotten the time frame. That so I thought sense, that though. that that mushroom cloud was what happened, and then that the found footage was, you know, just maybe discovered decades later or something. No, that would have been a good yeah. idea. See, I think, I think if you come at I'm about to just like, I feel like upset so many different streams of people with the next sentence I'm about to say. Yeah, no, go ahead. I think if you approach Southland Tales as though it is Richard Kelly's love letter to T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland, it makes sense. There's the constant, because obviously the if you've ever read the book of poems, The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot, there's that whole thing um, in that it's this is the way the world ends with a not with a bang, but with a whimper. And obviously they flip it around to, with not with a whimper, but with a bang. It is also fairly disconnected and discombobulated. There's a lot of weird time travel and imagery and biblical metaphors throughout it. I'm so sorry to literary fans <laughs> and fans of T.S. Eliot, who also is responsible for Cats. So, you know. No, he's, not, he's not responsible for Cats, the movie. <laughs> Which is also a great time. Not a five-star film in my book, but a great time. Is that Man, the, the cat butthole edition or the new release? <laughs> is that the fixed version or the not quite fixed version? Uh, whatever version I saw in cinema. The best, I don't know yeah, how long it, it lasted. Had it been in, muted or not? <laughs> well, so it was only, I don't know how, what, what release is like for you guys in the UK, but um, our Boxing Day release usually is then on for like three months the week we have a public holiday over here called australia day that sucks for different reasons but it's a month between boxing day and that holiday yeah and i saw it just before that holiday and there was only one screening left in the cinema so it it lasted a month in cinemas and was just gone i i never saw it i i totally yeah, i've not seen it yet it. <laughs> i no, it didn't I, it didn't appeal didn't at all it. Um, I kind I kind of wanted to watch it because like cats is nonsense anyway. That's the point of it. I don't know how you get a story out of nonsense. Well, I was baffled that they made it into a movie because like the whole I've seen cats the mu- musical a few times, and it's one of those things where it's like, oh, this show is insane, but at least I can watch the incredible dancers and be like, how yeah, are they doing yeah. that? And then you just CGI that. And you're like, yeah. oh, I don't. It doesn't like, matter that they're doing it real. I can't see their legs. Yeah. yeah. Like the point the point of Cats, the music, the musical, the stage show is the staging and the dancing. Yeah. Yeah. And the costume. Yep. They went, no, we want none of that. Um, and we want one good singer, please. Fuck, are we gonna have Sound to do a bonus tales... episode on cats? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> if we do if we do a full episode of cats. I'm not watching it. I'm certainly not renting it. I've spent my it's budget a... for this podcast. <laughs> I think it's I think cats is on Amazon Prime if you have that subscription service, I believe. Oh, okay. Um, Southern Tales is on no streaming service because it's special. <laughs> yeah, I had to. I, I rented it through Prime. I even I forked out the extra quid to watch it HD, just in case that made a difference. <laughs> Did it? Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to watch the SD version to find out. <laughs> oh, you should. Give it a crack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But watch it in lower quality. It might be better. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes oh. I regret by like renting a film instead of, because normally it's only like maybe 50p or £1.50 more to like buy it and have it forever on Amazon or YouTube or whatever. Yeah. This isn't one of those films that I regret <laughs> only renting. Yeah, because you can't see my heart. <laughs> I, I, I thought, look, I know it's a bit out there and I know that it's not for everyone. And but look, like you look at we we're talking before we started, the spread of reviews on Letterboxd is mm. even pretty much the yeah. whole way across. Yeah, it's I've, I've never seen anything like that before. And it's like the same with YouTube reviews, it's the same with reviews anywhere. It's either like one star or five stars. Like but there's even a few funny. smatterings of like a three and a half, which is even more insane to me. Like I would get it if you were either getting fives or ones but the fact that there's still like a decent amount of three and a halves to fours is like i'm i'm genuinely based on that math that at least one of you isn't in the same camp as me <laughs> yeah uh, yeah i think with the math you not being agreeing with us is also there <laughs> true true yeah. I, just, I feel like maybe maybe some of these people that are watching it want to understand it but didn't so they really really love it because there's that elusive like 
they they want to tell everyone they got it and they understood it and it was so yeah. so deep so they're like yeah oh yeah no brilliant film spot on really like the imagery and the in-depth meaning of marxism that was explored in the film <laughs> i think that's what bothered me about the film is i a lot of the reviews of like the awful people that watch it and go if you didn't if you didn't like it you obviously didn't understand it my problem is i fully understood it and i was like no i still don't like it no i'll put my <laughs> hand in the air and say i didn't fully understand this movie um i tried to <laughs> i tried really hard to but i just some of it was just like no i'm not sure what they're trying to do here yeah no i, I understood the aim and mm. i think that's why it annoyed me so much because like they could have landed on a few of the topics really well if they didn't also include 10 other things to talk about yeah but it was definitely like a shotgun approach instead of a sniper rifle like we'll, yeah. we'll just have, we're, yeah. we're just going to cover all of it we're not going to like just pick out a couple of things that we want to make a really solid point on but we'll I, probably I, still kill the person standing in front of us it's just going to be quite messy yeah yeah but it's I not going to be justin timberlake's long-range sniper it's, uh... no. <laughs> it probably tears through it though doesn't it that was that that scene was problematic as well though really like the whole suck my i want you to suck my dick and like it was a bit like i was really on edge at that point because i was like i don't think they'd go through with having like someone actually rate someone like that but they do oh it gets close i mean it's quite nice in a way that they're well not nice because it's a horrible thing but like she is immediately like killed for trying to do this instead of they're trying to be some sort of forgiveness or justifying it it's like no she's she's pointing a gun at someone else she's trying to get them she's trying to sexually assault them now she's dead yeah she's she's interesting i I completely forgot about her character and it's the stuff that's like the whole idea of her like just forgetting her own identity and becoming a fictional character from a script that she has read and then breaking down so completely so she has that let me suck your dick or i'll shoot myself and then she then points the gun at him like she's not able to even commit because it's like she, it's almost like she's run out of script. Yeah. So yeah. she doesn't know what to do, and she's just like so completely twistedly in love. And his reaction is fascinating because he goes from being boxer to then being oh, what's Jericho. his name? Jericho. Jericho, Jericho Kane. Kane. Yeah. yeah. Where he, and literally he's got like you know the Rock is doing some masterclass acting. There are two. He literally stands you know like like an action star when he is Jericho Kane. When he thinks he is Jericho Kane, and then when he's boxer, it's like the minute he's like, "Yeah, we can go back to this this hotel because I'm Jericho Kane now." And I think it's not great, <laughs> but there are just so many other insane things happening that it kind of blipped over. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think that there's a lot of really good scenes in this film individually. Like I really like the uh, the squib scene with the yep. two police officers. Loved that scene, and then it went. It made no sense again. You have these like small bits of really good scenes, and the the bits connecting them together is what makes no sense. Just one thing, I just tiny tiny gripe. The way he was drinking those six packs of beers, then so ineffective. Yeah, <laughs> so ineffective. Just all six attached to each other, in still in the six pack. I love it though. Swinging them up. I'm like, if I tried to do that, I'd clonk myself on the head with the can at the top. None of us have the rock's biceps, though. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, like we all we all clonk well, ourselves in the head, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how he actually gained all the muscle was from <laughs> drinking six <laughs> packs like that. Yeah, Ru- ruined his yeah. liver, but yeah. he got really built. Oh no, he, he just he swapped them out for protein shakes, and he just had like a six pack of protein <laughs> shakes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he would have been shitting so bad. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah um, it's it's got so many. I think it's got one of. I think that's the reason I maybe that it it hit sixteen year old, fifteen year old me so big is I hadn't. Maybe it's a bit of the I want to understand this movie, so I'm going to watch it a lot and I'm going to like it and I'm going to because it's showing me these things and I'm fifteen and I'm learning stuff and it's deep and you don't understand me, Dad. And yeah. <laughs> I think to be to be fair too, like I I hadn't seen a lot of films at this point that made me think about stuff yeah like mm-hmm. you know I, I at the time i was also like yeah transformers like yeah <laughs> to have a movie that just was weird and like not really linear and not make giving me any of the answers but sometimes giving me the answers and then just having really iconic sequences and to be fair a lot of my music tastes came from this movie like i discovered the killers and muse and black Re- rebel motorcycle mm. club it's got uh, that right? pixies in it as well and uh, pixies yeah a lot of good needle drops in this that led me to find those bands yeah it's it's got yeah it's an good, amazing good soundtrack. songs in it yeah <laughs> teen so Hall is not a crime is is the top song it is it absolutely is maybe i should buy the soundtrack to this film mm. 
it's yeah it's it's a really good soundtrack which is i think another thing that is annoying about the film yeah <laughs> it I sounds was, great the, the muse the muse track that comes in that was a bit like i was worried that there was going to be like more lip syncing <laughs> That was before the uh, the killer scene. Was it? Oh, yeah. was it? Oh, yeah. God. Sorry. It's all such a mishmash in my head. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a mishmash on screen, but it's 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 like a shepherd's pie, I think. Is the is that the same kind of food over there that it mm-hmm. is here in that it's like potato with cheese and meat and vegetables? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah cool. Yeah, because cool. it's shepherd's pie because it's lamb. Yeah. And then, That's yeah. what this movie is. It's just like, oh, lots of, is it all? It's just a mess and it's good and I love it. Yeah. I love it. I can't. I, got I, honestly, I thought it was going to age badly, maybe. Um, I don't think it aged badly. I think it was just bad from the start, and it remained <laughs> oh. consistently. Sorry. I know that's, no. I know that's yeah. hitting all over your what you just said, but I think it, it okay. hasn't aged badly. The only, the only bits the scenes we've already covered, the one other one was just the random little people in one of the scenes in high order. I thought that was a little bit like, and unnecessary and just a bit like we're trying to be edgy yeah, yeah in the, the, the nsa the... base yeah 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 with nana mail nana mail yeah. whatever her name was it is. usi yeah. dent or whatever yes which like yes. yeah. i thought was you know probably a dental practice but <laughs> you know missed that one um they take over first that's how it starts as so as a dental teeth. practice yeah that was a bit like mm, okay that's a bit unnecessary and that's a bit like something that you wouldn't see in a movie these days i think like uh like the way we like sounds horrible the way we use disability or like um things like um little people has changed quite a lot in the last 10 years yeah for sure um, for sure yeah. i was i was honestly expecting there to be because i remembered all these iconic quotable lines of dialogue as as well that even if they're bad lines like the um, nobody rocks the cock like Krista now, and I mean nobody, is a great line. Yeah. The fact that it's one of the last lines in the film is also very good. She's and all quite the... a powerful woman. Like, that's one thing this film holds yeah. up in a way is that actually, like, the casting and the, the roles of women in this film are, like, consistently, equal, like, parallel to a lot of the, the male roles. Yep. And um, they're yep. not, I mean, they're all quite bimbo-esque, but that's Hollywood. But they... Yeah, the, the women in this film are like strong and powerful, but they still make mistakes. They still get shot. They do horrible things, which is nice, I guess. So it's it, it's I think it's aged well in that in that right way as well because it's it's so easily could have been like you know the women are just there to look at and Kristen now is just like the sex appeal. Um, well, but she's not. The... She's got a whole huge part of the plot. Well, yeah, I, I think it's weird. If this movie wasn't made now, I think you probably would have seen more of Krista's body does that make sense like it's like it's it's actually kind of crazy that there's i might be remembering the film wrong there's no nudity that i can remember off the top of my head just the car does that count just the just the car car. (laughs) Uh, i normally i do normally write down nipple whenever i see a nipple Um, (laughs) i don't think i did no i don't think there's any nipples i think i did see lucinda handwriting at one point that was very 2006 that's not aged well (laughs) That was on the screen the in the background. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, there for the, maybe if they were quoting the Bible or something, stick a little bit of papyrus on there. <laughs> oh man! Uh, just oh. instead of Justin Timberlake saying it, every between every scene is just like a, a flash card of like. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the um, Bible quotes were weird. Like they felt really out of place watching it. Yeah, it was like they were quoting the film, they were quoting the screenplay, telling us what was going on, and quoting the Bible. They wanted like, to make sure of the maybe if they'd had different people during each bit, but actually it was all sort of just just it a was different template. I also really don't like his voice. No, for a voiceover. No, and look, like at this point, he wasn't an actor; he was still a singer. Yeah, he like, hadn't he, was... he hadn't done movies. All he'd done was be a dickhead at this point. Yeah. Uh, and he never talks about this film as his first big break. No one does. Like, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is the insane thing, right? So it's 2006, 2005 when you're making this movie. You have got the biggest wrestler in the world who's decided to get into acting and you're going to put him as your lead. Mm. You have one of the most iconic TV stars of the 90s in your film. Mm-hmm. You have then one of the most iconic actors of that early 2000s because he was in every gross-out comedy ever American Pie is so big, and he's you've got him. Yeah. Yep. Then you get one of the biggest pop stars, so you chuck him in there, and then you've got like Mandy Moore. You just grab all these other like big names from all over the place of character acting, and you just smush them into this movie. Then, then of course you've got Richard Kelly, who's just made you so much money with this weird indie film that's going to launch careers of like Gyllenhaal and all of that. 
And you're like, oh, yeah, no, this is great. This is a slam dunk. We'll let him do whatever he wants. <laughs> and you get this. And you know yeah. what? I think I'm disappointed because no one's trying to do something like this again. Someone yeah. should. Someone should do a Southland Tales for 2021. The first movie we had at the end of the pandemic when it's all completely done and everyone's vaccinated and we're all able to open mouth kiss strangers again should be <laughs> a Southland Tales-esque movie where they have like the biggest names in the world in a movie that makes no sense that you needed to read three books to understand. I don't think actors would do it. I don't think actors, actors would risk that anymore. Do you think oh, but, Richard Kelly would come back and redo it, or do you think he's in love with the one he made? I think no, he's he's done his one. You need to find someone new to do it. Yeah, so, if you, if, yeah. When you suggested the film, and you were like, I, I I'd not heard of it before. I looked it up, and it was like it's described as a sci-fi comedy with you know The Rock, Sean William Scott, and keep just calling her Buffy. Well, Sarah Michelle yeah, Gellar. That's the one. I was like, that sounds fucking insane. This is going to be great. And then two and a half hours later, after watching the film, I was like, I'm not entirely sure this is worth getting you as a guest for. (laughs) (laughs) I would have absolutely understood that. I would have jumped into this like little Zoom call and no one was here. And just like, okay. Yeah, just get an email through. Dear Tom, forget it. (laughs) No worries. Tom, hey, I love that movie. Just a brief moment of us being like, great, our first special guest, and we're going to get immediately blacklisted by everyone at Sands Runs. Yeah. Because we're like, sorry, we <laughs> fucking hated it. <laughs> well, no, no. I'm used to, I'm used to, like, I think every time we discuss movies on that show, I'm usually in a minority because I unabashedly love film and every movie starts at five stars. And then okay. it, oh, that's a good out of five. To think. That's a solid way to think. Yeah. Not right. out of not out of ten. It doesn't start at the halfway. It starts at full five, and then yeah. you lose points if you disappoint me. That, fair yeah, enough. no, that's fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm normally like that. I am normally like just generally enjoy movies all the time. But yeah, this was one where I was like, I'm I'm glad it's over. <laughs> yeah, I've I, never, yeah, I've never. Yeah, been it, it really though. makes you wait for that moment as well. It really draws out. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been happy that a film finished. I, yeah, I genuinely sent a photo of the end like the end screen to Dan and Mikey like I got through it <laughs> it ended oh man I feel bad but also I don't no you so, should it was an experience shouldn't. it was no, uh, you know it was something to talk about it was definitely a film we'd never seen before yeah um, and I, I think it's a problem of getting other people to watch this film because everyone I've talked to for the past like three days as I've been like you should watch Southland Tales like, oh is it good no it's awful you should watch <laughs> Southland Tales yeah. but yeah. you're right you should watch yeah. people should watch this movie like regardless of whether you're listening to this being like oh my god the three guys hated it Tom is an idiot <laughs> you can't argue with the fact that there is a portion of people who love this yeah. it's got a weird cult following people hate it people love it some people think it's fine and isn't that just fascinating like yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. It's just... I kind of yeah I want to find out who out of my friends I, do um... like this film because I, I then want to make some assumptions about them <laughs> so it's you know I, I, I want to know what people think actually because it is it is such a strange divisive film yeah. that just yeah look I am lucky that being the person I was when I was 15 and 16 I had the MySpace outlet because if I hadn't have I absolutely would have got a tattoo that I regretted I just know <laughs> I would have I would have been like rocking that Jesus tattoo that that boxer has on his back or like a tattoo of Roland or the, the have a nice suicide as a tramp stamp <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. Not, not to give bad advice, but you should definitely get a cell phone tattoo. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, so, so I guess now the bit that I mean we're we're all anticipating. So, out of ten, how many Southland tattoos should Tom get? Would you give this film? <laughs> See, I want to say ten because I want to get I want Tom to get a Southland. Yeah, tattoo. Ev- every single one that The Rock has, all of his yeah. religious tattoos. <laughs> no, I want to give it like a four uh, car sex scenes out of ten. <laughs> if that, and that's um... that's generous, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna. I was going with a solid two. Wow. Oh, yeah, man. one one star. But that's only because I feel a bit mean giving it less than that. My letterbox rating was literally half a star, which is like one out of ten. My mm. my exact note was uh, one out of ten characters trying to shoot themselves. The one is me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, look, I... that happened a lot in the film. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of people try to 
A lot yeah. of people try to shoot themselves in this yeah. movie. Even Sean William Scott tries to shoot the other version of himself. Yeah, he tries yeah. to shoot himself twice. Yeah. And it's both like... him. <laughs> I love the look on his... I See, again, I love the film. I love the look on his face as they do that, like, as he's doing that handshake. It's great. Oh, it's, it ends so great. It ends because it ends with his, like, manic face and then the line, you know, Pim yeah. Stoke commit suicide. It's just... It's so weird because, like, like Sean William Scott is the best actor in this film. He's great. Yeah, he was. He yeah. was. He was good in this film. I was surprised. He was really consistent. Anyway, I, if out of ten, I'm going to give this. Um, I, look, I'm giving it a ten. I I'm giving it ten. Jericho Canes out of ten. <laughs> that is it's because I, I love it, but I also know that it is fundamentally flawed, and it is not a perfect film. But it is. It has a special, and I guess this is the point of this show. It has a special spot for me because of the time that I discovered it, yeah. and it led to the discovery of other movies and other things, and being like, you can tell stories that don't have to make sense. You know, it's it's that's you know, it's good. Congratulations, yeah. Richard Kelly. Yeah, it's, it's uh, get a nostalgia, the nostalgia aspect for sure. Is it, like I feel like if I'd watched film. this when I was that yeah. sort of age, it would probably be the same. Honestly, <laughs> I think I'd have loved this film as a teenager. Yeah, um, I, I, still, I still think, or I at least pretended it. to, because my other teenage friends would have definitely loved this film. <laughs> and you would have been tricked eventually because you would have been faking enjoying it for so long. Mm. It would have eventually just warped into just full circle enjoyment. Oh, yeah. Is that what happened to you? <laughs> no, no, I think I, I think I just, I just, I just didn't meet the right. Yeah. You're the one time. pressuring other people to like it. <laughs> well, no, I, I didn't even like go around and like, I had sort of two films that I used to tell people to watch when I was like that age. And this wasn't one of them. Like I loved it and I would watch it a lot. But I used to tell people to watch Thank You for Smoking all the time because that was a movie I loved. Jesus, my prof- like formative <laughs> years had two very absolutely cooked influences <laughs> in Southland Tales and a movie about smoking. Yep, that's another uh, film I have not seen. That's a good one. I can I can hand on heart say that that is actually a yeah. decent film. It is also only 80 minutes long. Oh, oh thank oh, God. Yeah, that's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might we might actually watch that. So, Tor, are you excited for the... Do you know that they're making, like, a prequel and sequels to this? They're not, are they? Yeah. I think they're, like, trying to get a sequel and prequels made. That is very good. I think what they should do with this, so if they they should take the comics, make them into a movie, but get all the same actors and do like a wet, hot American summer kind of thing. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. That'd be so, but they're holding, like, I've seen Sean William Scott recently. He's barely aged. The Rock yeah. is just bigger. Sarah yeah. Michelle still looks like Sarah Michelle. It would be very, I don't know if The Rock can do the hand thing anymore. He can. <laughs> he can. can be- have you? He does it in Pain and Gain. It's the He plays oh, two man. versions of characters, either big or, like, nervous, and yeah. the nervous ones all do this. <laughs> oh, so it's a The Rock thing. Yeah. The yeah, Dwayne Johnson yeah. thing, not it's a, it's a Southland Tales thing. It's how he plays Meek, I think. Um, he does it a bit in Jumanji when he's playing. I was, yeah. Um, I knew yeah. I'd seen it somewhere before. It's yeah. it's his, like, I'm the rock and I'm a bit scared pose. That's yeah, his kind of... trying to make himself look small, but actually makes himself look a bit <laughs> bigger. <laughs> yeah. Somehow yeah. wider, yeah. <laughs> Huge. Man, if they're, if they're making a prequel and a sequel to this, then sign me up. If I find out you've lied to me... I'm pretty I walk sure to England and fight you. <laughs> You're um, welcome. Oh, I found an article. I found yeah. an article. It, it's he's laid out plans, whatever that means. Oh, get him all the money. Elon <laughs> Musk, stop trying to go to space. Fund this movie. My um, hope actually... is to direct a new hashtag Southland Tales prequel film using a hybrid of animation and live action. Oh no. This new film could be released in tandem with an expanded version of the existing <laughs> film with significant new content. Hang on. Are oh, we, we going to get a combination with other worst film we've seen on this podcast, Titan AE? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that episode's not coming out for a while, unfortunately. <laughs> well, it's not unfortunate. <laughs> Wait for What's a good, good episode. Is- that you've just said there is another movie that you've seen on this podcast that is worse than the one I recommended. So I feel good. That is oh, yeah, it's been a mixed bag. Yeah, we yeah. haven't loved not every film we loved has yeah. held up. No, there's there's, um, there's, a, there's a couple that I looked at that I was like, I know that hasn't held up, and I don't need to watch it to know that. So I, I'm fine. <laughs> so you decided Southland Tales. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Well, so I was genuinely <laughs> curious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't blame you. <laughs> like, <they're>, yeah. <laughs> well, thank, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, um, yeah thank you for having me. Yeah, it was. It was great to talk about it and and get it off my chest. Yeah, no, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Three we've... days of warning to talk about this film. <laughs> <sighs> uh, You're yeah. welcome.
Yeah, yeah you're definitely. absolutely welcome. Thank yeah. you. Well, I guess with that, then I've been Dan. I've been Michael. I've been Helena. I've been Tom. And I mean, I mean, Tom, where can we find you online? Not yeah. that it matters, because like this show gets maybe thirty listeners. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, you've got to you've got to you've got to start somewhere. So um, no, you can you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and Letterboxd, all at Awkward Treed, and I'm on the Stance Pants Radio Network of podcasts. If you like footy, the good Australian kind, um, I have a show called How Good's Footy that comes out on Wednesdays. If you like scary movies, I have a podcast called Scary Boys that comes out on Fridays. And if you just like other stuff, I appear in some other stuff on that network as well so uh that's where you can find me yeah we're big fans of you indie indies for nerds there was there was a moment oh. where we we're like we're recording with pop mandarin oh shit <laughs> <laughs> i am i'm i'm just glad that you wanted me on after hearing the excellent accent that pop mandarin has for three seasons <laughs> of the podcast you can find this podcast at hilton pod on twitter that's at h-i-l-t-m pod and i guess yeah let, let's know what you think and you yeah go and watch southland tales or don't yeah no watch it watch it just give <laughs> give it give it a go and if you hate it you hate it but maybe you'll love it What is it? Is it like 10 or 9? Nine? 9. 9. 9, yep. Yeah. Sorry Just to make a, you get up early. Yeah, That's weird. I, I didn't wake Sorry. up 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I respect the fuck out of that. <laughs>